Now, Saturday's Armistice Day protests saw around 300,000 demonstrators gather in London, resulting in a major police operation. The Met have released photos of people they now want to speak to in relation to suspected hate crimes, including these two men wearing alleged Hamas-style headbands, this woman holding an offensive poster with photos of Suella Braverman and Rishi Sunak, and this woman holding a sign that features a swastika inside the Star of David. Police have also been criticised for posing with a masked child holding a Palestine flag. Scotland Yard admitted it was not advisable for the two officers to have stopped for a photo over such a contentious issue. Meanwhile, British Transport Police have appealed for information about these four men following a racially aggravated altercation with pro-Palestinian protesters at Waterloo Station. Three arrests have been made this afternoon in connection with a hate crime investigation in the same station. On Saturday, nine officers were injured, with 145 people arrested and seven charged so far. <clears throat> um, it was always going to end like this. Was it down to Suella Bravman? I don't think most people read the op-ed piece in the <laughs> Times and thought, oh, I'm a meathead. This is the kind of stuff I like to do. You know, frankly, those kind of people... Would don't have, read the Times. They'd have turned up in an RSPCA <laughs> march if they thought there was a scrap in it and a beer at the end. I don't think... You know, I think we can get carried away with the blame game. So that contingent were always going to be there because they were sufficiently fueled into the end of the mm. whole Tommy Robinson thing. You know, they, the idea that, you know, it's about my England, isn't it? There's a bit of that going on. And that's great to be patriotic. Uh, I, I think most people probably are. But the other side of it, I think, gets <laughs> off lightly. I mean, you were there, you say, JJ, this mm. idea that, yes, of course, it's all... Of course, most people that went on a march were not extremists or sympathisers with terrorism. That's, that's a given. However... They are sharing oxygen with lots of people who are. Too many people, frankly. Those placards, the kind of things that are said, the intimidation of the poppy sellers. People dressed like terrorists, walking our streets, carrying foreign flags, swastikas, Lord knows what else. I mean, this is meant to be the United Kingdom in the 21st century. It's not 1587 in some backwater place halfway across the world. And this is how it looks to many people. I think that's what riled people up. That's why people get upset about this, because they see this panning out and think, what the hell is going on? Well, I'd ask, where were those people? Where were they? Because clearly, we've got close to a million people on the streets saying, free Palestine, free Palestine. We had about 2,000 of these, of Suella's boot boys, I call them, who turned up draped in the, uh, 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 in the union, union flag yeah. uh, and draped in the England flag. And it wasn't just the opinion, Ed, for me. It's the fact that Cruella, for the previous week, two weeks, has been on the news, doing the media rounds, saying, this is disgraceful, this shouldn't be happening, they should be cancelling this, blah, 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 blah. Calling them hate but, marches. Yeah, calling them hate marches. So she, she's, she jumped up all this support from a section of the country who are angry. I went, I went down there to the Cenotaph, went down to Parliament Square. There was no women in these, in these, these groups. These were men, bald heads, skinheads, looking for a fight. They were drinking cans. It was a horrible atmosphere. I didn't feel threatened. They weren't targeting me, but they were targeting the police. They wanted a ruck. You yeah. go to the peace march, Women, children, white people, black, brown, middle class, working class, everyone's there together. So, yes, I, I take your point that there are some people part, who are uh, arranging these, um, these protests who have links to Hamas, mm. absolutely. And if, if the BMP or whatever were organising a, a peace for, for Gaza protest, yeah. I wouldn't attend it because it's all Correct, about that, well, that was my No, but the, the difference well. is that would be, would, would it would be told, banned. Yeah, but they, they yeah, might, it, it would be banned. It would be, but, because it has been banned before. But, but, That's the majority, the but, the, but the majority of people on the march, they don't know. That, oh, of that course. No, but this Hamas. is the thing. They're, they're, they are going there purely because yeah. they, are, they don't want to see more kids getting killed. Absolutely. That's it. The rest and of the politics is out. I'm completely on side. And actually, I made the point that Suella knew what she was doing by calling them hate marches, right? You do have the overwhelming majority of people that are genuinely concerned about the plight of Palestinians, which I completely support. And then you have this small slither of people that still do exist that are genuinely just hateful, anti-Semitic, you know, racist, yeah. horrible people. And I think that's the, the, the bigger issue here because the anti, there hasn't been a rise in anti-Semitism. There have been people that are anti-Semitic that are bold enough yeah, to go exactly. onto the streets of they've, our capital they've been under and a rock shout exactly and now they've come out stuff. from the rock. I just want to make the point about the PREVENT program because the PREVENT scheme that we have in this country is our counter-terrorist um, program um, that the police have, have championed uh, for years now. And actually, they're huge sort of security oversights in how it's done. So uh, we know that one in four pe um, 
people that are convicted of Islamist terrorist offenses since 1998 are actually from asylum backgrounds, but the uh, uh, prevent scheme doesn't apply to these migrants coming off on the boats, right? And now you have people literally standing in the streets of London shouting clearly hateful stuff. They clearly, you know, do have links to these terrorist groups. They're clearly, if they're not terrorists themselves, they're, they're more terrorist aligned, right? What does that say about the nature of or the state of our security forces, that these are the kind of people that can brazenly stand in London and say but, these things? But this is, I, I think this is what where we come back to what Ian was saying though, which is about, it is about policing these things. And, and it's about, you know, we've all seen that picture of the woman with the Nazi flag inside the Star of David, walking along, you know, thinking it's mean, perfectly okay. What, what, can the, what, can the, what can the police she, do? She can, they make, can, they make her, can they make what? her unthink that? No, that is they can arrest her. Do they, oh, oh, you mean you're yeah, about Yeah, we're to living prevent. with people we, who we have can see her now. That, that is the woman. So well, in, in fairness to the police, and obviously I'm the last person to defend the coppers, but there were no police in the park. I was at the corner of Hyde Park for the march. There were no police there because there's too many people. Mm. There's not enough police. With the um, the football the hooligans, if you wish, yeah. there was only a couple of thousand of them. Easier to corral them, and they're much more identifiable. But these, the, the, there's a one, one woman who was carrying a poster that said "From the River to the Sea." That slogan. And I was there with Kevin O'Sullivan, and we said we looked at the woman, and she held it up proudly and said, "Do you want to take a picture?" Like, and we were like, "No, that's really offensive." And she went, "It's on the back as well." It's kind of walking. <laughs> but there's no police within that crowd to pull her out and say, you're arrested. Is that not double standards? But, and, and... Because there's too many people is what I'm saying, Esther. But I think, I think the question is, what, what is the police supposed to do? Right. Uh, they can't. They can't. No, but you can't make people. Un okay. The bigger issue is not how many protests you can ban, or how many people you can arrest, or how many people the police. You're can reach talking out saying, about. It's actual... the it's the wider context. We are living in a country. We are sharing a country with people that hate British values, that are anti-Semitic, that are hateful, that are probably racist well, as well. Only, and we have to talk about what does that mean? What do we do about them? Do we deport them? What do we do about this situation? Yes, but, but that actually is a matter for the government more than the police. The police are given the law handed down by Parliament, and they have to make sure that that law is followed. But it's up to government politicians, or politicians of all sides, to, to work out what the problems are and to come up with solutions. But just on your point, you're absolutely right. I mean, the rise of anti-Semitism, two weeks ago, the Met said there had been a 1,350% increase in anti-Semitic um, offences. Mm -hmm. you know, that is absolutely huge. But as far as the march is concerned, obviously, Suella Braverman, was very, very critical of the police and said that the police had favourites, was showing favouritism, that it was much harder uh, line, took a much harder line on right-wing protesters than on left-wing protesters. But actually, that was really muddying the waters because, as you were saying, these were two very different protests that they had mm. to police. Yeah. One, hundreds of thousands yeah. of people. And what they have been very clear on today is that those um, banners and hate-filled comments and you know, that are illegal will be punished, but that the time that their policy when they're policing a, um, a march like this is they don't take people off the streets at the time because mm -hmm. that causes more problems. They will right. go and find them afterwards. This is actually their policy. They will go and find them afterwards and make sure that yeah. they are, uh, you know, yeah, charged, they don't, charged they don't with the crime. Choose, yeah. as I she mean, suggested. but if there's a crime going on at the time that is going to put somebody's life in danger, like people, you know, itching for a fight or having a fight, then those people will be arrested and taken away <laughs> at you, the time. But, it's two different ways then of you policing. Just, but then you look at what at, at that, and 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 you speak to Jewish groups who say that just by having all this, having hundreds of thousands yeah. of people with those, and of course we're going to, you know, of course the media is going to focus on uh, the people carrying. Yeah, you're uh, going to find the nasties. You're going to find yeah. the nasties. So of course that make, means that you know, loads of Jewish people are going to be saying, do you know? What? Maybe I won't go into it. But that where comes back to Esther's point of changing people's opinions and or the culture, who, are, who, the culture. who is in the country. I mean, on the point of the police being seen to be impartial, because that's the issue that Suella raised, that they, they favour certain uh, you know groups over others. I think we have to stress why it's so important for the police to be impartial, because they actually exercise a lot of powers over the public. So just a quick reminder of what the police can actually do in exercising their duties. They can enter our homes without permission. They can enter our businesses without permission. They can separate parents from their children. They can uh, they can dep um, deprive us of our liberties on suspicion of wrongdoing. The police actually have a lot of power over us. So for us to see a police officer, for instance, taking a picture with a child with a, a you know, pro-Palestine flag, it, you know, for us, that's fine because we're not police officers. But when you're exercising your duties and someone thinks, actually, you might be politically inclined because you're wearing a rainbow flag or you're taking pictures with pro-Palestinian protesters and all of that, that actually, you know, makes the public mistrust yeah, the police force and more. And that's why Suella Braverman's points actually hit a nerve because well, we've Esther, seen years of the police not necessarily behaving in the most impartial <clears throat> way. Esther, the police in this country are not impartial. 
Look at the stats so about look at look at the stats about how black people are targeted more mm. than anyone else in the country, <laughs> and then tell me that they're impartial. They're, they're not. They're not. But I would what I would say is that this at that march, it felt like it was an anti-Israel march. People are chanting stuff against Israel. They weren't chanting free the hostages, stop Hamas. It was free Palestine, free Palestine, free Correct. Palestine. You're right. Yeah, there is an anti-Israel underpinning. Mm. Yeah. In, in fact, not underpinning, <clears throat> an overtly anti-Israel uh, vibe and sense from all of that.